Hello everyone, welcome back to Data Analysis YouTube channel. In this particular video, we will take more, ex more um, examples on some more date functions so that we see the flexibility that we have with the different date functions in Microsoft Excel. Um, for this video, we'll talk about date diff. So date diff, it's like the short form of date difference. This is how it is spelled, date D-I-F. So this particular um, function helps you to calculate the difference between a start date and an end date, right? In Microsoft Excel, without um, having to do it manually. So I'm just going to put this here, start date. It calculates the difference between the start date and the end date. Now it's this particular um, function called date div is an undocumented function in Microsoft Excel. So what this means is that you will not just see, um, you would not just see the function pop out when you're trying to type the function date to div, except you have typed it and then you open the, the um, bracket, then you're going to see it. And then you also not see um, this, the arguments in the syntax being laid out, just like you would have in a function like date, for example. So you see the date function, right? Just typing it, you have the syntax, um, the arguments in the syntax laid out, like year, month, and day. But for the date div, this is not the case. So you need to pay attention to this video so that you can understand what the arguments um in the syntax is like and what rules they have. So the, um, the date diff function allows you to calculate difference between years, difference between months, and difference between days. Okay, this is amazing. And this is how the formula looks like. So when you type the date diff um, function, it allows you to put, there are three arguments in the syntax. The first argument is the start date. The second argument is the end date. And the third argument is the unit um, that you want your um, results to, to be shown in. So by units, we have different units. We have the year, we have the month, we have the day. So these are the three basic units. Um, this function, date div, also allows other extra units like yd, which excludes the number of um, days. Okay. It excludes the number of months when you're doing your um, computation. It's more advanced than this ones. Okay, so we are going to start from these um, units that we have, Y, M, and D. So basically, I'm going to take this out. And basically, what we have right here is that we want to calculate the difference in years between the start date and the end date. This example, of course, might be, it's easy to just have a look when you just have a look at it because it's 1995 and 1996. And of course, the year's difference is going to be one. But when you're asked to get the difference in months between these two, you may have to do some calculations um, mentally, which might take some time. And of course, when you're now asked to get the difference in days, this may even be more tasking. But with the date diff function, it is easy to do it. So we do this date diff, just like we have in this um, column C that is being shown to us already. So the first um, argument in the syntax is the start date, which I have just selected. And the next argument is the end date, which I have just selected as well. And the unit, um, of course, is the year. So I'm going to use Y to represent that, which is how the function works. So this is the response that we have, and we will go for the next one, which is the month, date diff. We're going to select the start date, the end date, and then we'll put this, the, we'll put M for that. And we can see that the difference in months between the start date and the end date is 14 months. And then we are going to go for the days, date diff. And we do the start date, we do the end date, and we select the unit, which is represented as D. And this is what we have, 440 days between the start date and the end date. Super easy. Um, something to really consider is that if the 
start date okay is greater than the end date you will you excel will return a um hashtag hash num error so let's just quickly um see how this works let me say i change this to 12 and it becomes 1996 let us see how that goes out now this is what we have and this is happening because the start date is um is way further than the end date okay and microsoft excel does not understand this so i'm just going to quickly undo this and this is what we have for the basic units of the date diff function next we are going to look at the um would i say the more sophisticated um units for the date diff function and um so the next example we are looking at is how do you calculate the number of days between two dates um, while ignoring the years? So ignoring the years means that you're assuming that um, the dates are in the same year, right? The start date is in 1995 and the end date is in 1996. But this time we want to we want Excel to assume for us that these days and months um are in the same year so how do we do this so um this is what we're going to do date diff we open the parentheses the syntax the arguments in the syntax remain the same we select the start date we select the end, end date and the unit will now be yd okay and because you're putting text in a function you have this is why you need to Put the double quotation marks to start and to end and this is what we have so um what this means is that the difference between the two dates ignoring the years is of course 74 this is assuming that the years are the same okay and i'm just going to copy this formula and paste it here so that it's easy to follow Perfect. Um, okay, so we go to the next one, which we have. We want to know the number of month of days between the start date and the end date while ignoring the months and the years in the um, start date and the end date. Okay, so you can use the date um, date to date function to get this one as well. And here you select the start date end date and then we are going to use this unit md and we close this and this is what we have okay so we have 12 days while ignoring the uh, months and the years and remember right the the date starts with the month and the middle is the day while it ends with the year so here the the start date is basically 24th of july 1995 and the end date is 6th of october 1996 so of course um ignoring the month and the years the difference between 6 and 24 is 12. so this is what we have and i'm just going to copy this and paste right here for more clarity this is what we have so we can use the date diff um function to actually calculate the number of weeks between the dates between the start date and the end date we know that we can use the week norm function for this as well and um the link to the week norm function is in the description box there was a very detailed tutorial about the week norm um, function the link to that video is in the description box so do well to check and also the link to this practice file will also be in the is also in the description box so do well to download the practice file and also practice on your own as you watch the video and if you're coming to this youtube channel if you're stopping by for the first time please do well to subscribe drop us a like give us a thumbs up drop a comment of what you'd like to see next and um 
also hit the notification bell so that you will be alerted every time that we post new contents to this YouTube channel. This YouTube channel explains Microsoft Excel in very easy to understand ways. And of course, you can contact me personally via my social media um, channels, which is also in the description box. And you can also contact me by email. So let us go ahead to calculate the number of weeks between the dates, okay, using the date diff function instead of week norm. Um, date diff. This is what we have here. Of course, the arguments remain the same. You get the start date, you get the end date, and the syntax, the unit we're going to use instead is this. Okay, so we are just going to do a basic calculation. We know that we have seven days in the week. Okay, so if you have the total number of days and you want to know how many weeks, you just divide by seven, just like we have here. Now we are having this um, showing up. And this is showing up basically as a date because of the format. Okay, the format right here on the home tab, in the number section of the home tab, the format for this cell is in dates. This is why this is showing up. So what we need to do is to change the format to general, and this is what we have. But of course, we want um, a whole number, right? Um, I mean, 62.85 weeks or eight, six weeks may not be very easy to comprehend. So we need the week shown as a whole number. So this is what we can do. We use the round function to get this done. Okay, and we just open the brackets. We already have the number, the num digits. The number is the date diff function that we already have. The num digit is zero. We want to round it to zero decimal places so that we get the exact um, figure for the number of weeks. And this is what we have, 63. And I'm just going to copy this and, of course, paste it right here. You can notice that before pasting the function right here, I first put the um, inverted comma sign, okay, so that um, Excel does not recognize this as a function anymore, but as text. So um, this is what we have, and we are going to look at another function right now, which is called now, okay? So this function um, is different from the date function or today function because today the, the, we have done the today function in the previous video but this is an extension of the today function because it shows you the date today and it also shows you the time now that you're putting in um, this function in Microsoft Excel. So this is how the function works. It doesn't have any arguments, just like the today function. It's one of the few functions in Microsoft Excel where you don't, do not have arguments. So basically, you just type the now and you do this, and this is what you have. So basically, um, as at the time I'm, I was working on this um, video, it was the 4th of January 2023, and the time was 9.48 a.m. So this is what we have. Now, just in case, I'm, I'm just going to, out of curiosity, just to show us something. You type this out, and um, just know that the, fo the format, okay, of the cell, okay, would um, affect how you see the result, okay? If the format of the cell is not showing as custom, um, you're not going to have this show up. You could have it shown as something else, which may not be this. So if if your result does not show up, does not give you the day and the time, it's probably because um, your format is not um, done well, and this is how you can update your format. And by the way, every time you close this Microsoft Excel file and you open it, this um, now function is going to update automatically, okay? It's going to show you the time that the file is open, it's going to update itself. And because, and this is because Microsoft Excel is connected to the time in your um, system at every point in time. So this is how to change the format to custom, just like I have here. You click on the drop down, you get the more number formats. And of course, the for the custom, okay, this is the selection I made, 
I came, I scrolled down. You have a lot of options right here, but I came down I, and I chose month, day and year, hour and minute, okay? This is what I chose and I chose okay to format this particular cell to give me the results that I need. Still in this particular video, we will go through how to calculate number of days um, when you have a start date and end date. Um, and also we would look at other examples. So let's go ahead with starting to see how to calculate the number of days when you have the start date and the end date. So here in this example, we have the start date, we have the end date, and then we have this, okay, which I already mentioned as the result, but I'm gonna change this to be number of days, and I'm just going to wrap the text so that all the items in the cell is visible. Perfect. So um, if you have two dates, a start date and an end date, and you want to know the number of days, okay, between the start date and the end date, what you just simply need to do is do the end date minus the start date, and this is what you have. And of course, you can drag this down to get for the other examples that we see right here. Okay, so if you want to simulate by having your calendar, okay, you can count on your calendar how many days um, do you have between the 12th of Ju July 2021 and the 25th of July 2021, how many days? You're going to see that it is 13 days. So we're going to go to another function which is called network days. We know that in a typical work environment, people do not work. I mean, people are not expected to work seven days a week, yeah? So there are certain um, working days in the week for everyone who works. Um, it depends on the work environment. But I'm, the, the, I'm assuming that it is a professional work environment. So there is a function in Microsoft Excel that handles this. And... Um, the net the network days okay um function which is what we have right here when you open the bracket for this particular function you have three arguments the first one is the start date the second one is the end date and the last is holidays and of course the network days so networking days it also um considers public holidays so that the number of working days in the month can be um, accurately computed. Now for some, it depends on the place of work, right? Um, public holidays are usually unpaid, okay? So it depends on what you want to use this function to achieve, but the holidays is um, one of the arguments. And just like we can see, the start date and the end date arguments are compulsory, but the holidays argument is optional. This means that you can skip this if you do not have any information for the holidays. And this is why you see it is in the um, parentheses that you can see right there. So let us get started. You select the start date and the end date and use the comma separator. And for, for this particular example, we are just going to stop here. Okay, so, I mean, despite the fact that we have 48 days between the 12th of June and the 30th of July, 2021, we have 48 days, right? But in terms of number of networking days, we have only 35, okay? And, um, of course, this is logical because... I mean, people don't work for all the days in the week or the days in the month. There are certain days that are not regarded as um, working days. But then for this particular function, it's there's something to um, also understand. The default assumption in this function is that Saturday and Sunday are not working days by default. So this is what this function considers, okay? Um, and of course, in this particular example, we did not have any public holidays at all. And so it, the number of days you're seeing here, the number of network days that we can see here is assuming that Saturdays and Sundays are um, 
work-free days and also there are no public holidays. So we go to another example where we have networking days with public holidays. Okay, how do we calculate this? So I'm just going to zoom in so that we can see this um, even clearly. And then it is the same. I'm going to type this network days, open the parentheses, select a start date, select an end date, use a comma separator. And this time around, I have holidays and I have just put them in column L right here. And I am going to fix them so that when I drag, um, so that when I drag the the functions, they're not going to um, they're going to be fixed. So I'm going to fix the cells. I have not fixed them properly. Okay, so I am fixing the cells so that when I drag the formula, um, it's not going to really change. And this is it. I'll drag down. So we can see a remarkable difference. These are the public holidays that we have. We have public holidays um, the 12th of June, the 30th of June, and 15th of July. And, I mean, this is case in point, okay? This is case in point, that um, within the period, we've had two public holidays for this particular example. And this is why the network days with holidays is lower than only the network days without holidays. It's the same thing for the second example, which where the date range is between the 12th of July to the 25th of July. We can see that we just have one public holiday. And this is why we have nine networking days with public holidays. This is cool, right? So you can please drop your comments in the comment section if you, of course, like what you see. And um, the next function we are going to look at is Network Days International. Now, let us um, try to let us think about the fact that not everyone has work free days on Saturdays and Sundays. Some people work on shifts, so they even have to work on Saturday and Sunday, and they take, um, say, Monday and Tuesdays off. It depends on how the work is done. It depends on the terms, the contractual um, terms. And this is why this function was developed in Microsoft Excel to take into consideration, to allow flexibility for people to actually choose um, which days are weekends for them or which days are not um, working days for them not assuming that everyone have everyone would not be at work on saturday and on sunday so um it's the same way network day international and we open the bracket and of course we can see from the arguments you still have the start date arguments the end date argument then you have an opportunity to choose your weekend in case the default weekend for you is not saturday and sunday you have the opportunity to choose the weekend and like i and like you can see right there the weekend argument is optional just like the holidays argument is also optional so you have four arguments for the network days international and i'm just going to select the start date use the comma separator select the end date and then going to the weekend argument you we can see the options of um days for weekends or work off days i would call it that that microsoft excel is suggesting for us so if you use one it means that Saturday and Sunday are your um, off days, okay, are your weekends, and which is the default system for the network days um, function. But then if you choose two, it means that Sunday and Monday are your weekends. If you choose three, it means Monday and Tuesday are your weekends. And if you choose seven, it means Friday and Saturday are your weekends. And of course, some people even just have one day off in the week. Out of a seven-day um, week, they have just one day off. It's either only Sunday or only Monday or only Thursday or only Saturday. It depends on what works for you. So for this one, let us just assume that um, a certain staff has to has to work for all the days in the week except Tuesday and Wednesday. So either you make the selection right here 
and use the comma separator. And of course, the Network Days International also allows you to also select the public holidays that you have between the start date and the end date. And I'm just going to do this and I will not forget to fix the cells for the holidays so that I can drag the formula down. This is what I have. And remember that um, we are assuming, okay, that Tuesday and Wednesday is the day of work. And I drag this down. So basically, um, we have not really seen changes in an uh, in all in our responses for the first and the second examples, but we have seen a change in the third one. We have also seen a change in the fifth example, right? So this is how the Network Days International works. It gives you the flexibility to select which days are weekends for you because not everyone has a default weekend of Saturday and Sunday. And the next function we are going to look at, still in the date functions, is the end of month. The end of month function is very um, useful sometimes for people um, who have to prepare bank reconciliation statements at the end of, uh, of at the end of a period at the end of the month. So this particular function is useful for you, and this is how this works. Okay, EO month, when you open the parenthesis, you see two arguments which are compulsory. The first one is the start date. So you just need the start date and the month. So the start date is basically, I mean, the starting date that you're referring to. And then the month is um, how many months in, how many months um, do you want Excel to return for you? So um, basically, this function, okay, gives you the last, the date for the last day of a certain month. But then you can tell Excel, I need you to calculate the last day of this date, okay, in three months time, in two months time, or even five months before. I hope that is clear. So Excel calculates the number, the last, it gives, it returns for you the last day of the month from the date that you have selected as the start date, okay? So in this case, our start date remains the same and we want Excel to return for us the last day for the same month, which is in the start date. The month in the start date, in the start date is June. But here the date says 12th of June, 2021. So I want Excel to give me 30th of June. And I'm just going to put zero because zero means give me the last day of the month for the current month for the month that is in the date that I am referring to. And this is what I've got. Okay. So um, just like I mentioned, you can tell Excel, okay, to give me, you can tell Excel to give you the last day of the month for two months two months ahead from the start date and i'm going to do two right here and of course the start date here is in july the month in the start date in this particular example is july right so we are expecting that two months away from july should be september august and september and the last day of September is the 30th. So this is what this um, function does, end of month function, very useful for people who have to churn in reports at the end of the month. You can just prepare your shadow and have this function plugged in, okay, so that it does the, it does the update for you as you go along. And then we're going to have this, um, the next one I wanted to to give me to return seven months ahead. And this is what I've got. And of course, you can, you can even add functions. You can say today, Excel, please give me three months, the end, the last day of three months before today's date. Okay. And I am going to do three. As at the day where this video was um, done, this video was done on the 4th of January, 2023, okay? 
Okay, so I want three months before, so I'm going to use minus. When you use the negative sign, it calculates the, the month before. When you use the positive, uh, uh, when you use a positive number, positive integer, it calculates the number of months ahead. When you use a negative one, it calculates the number of months before. So this is what I've asked the cell to provide for me. And of course, three months before, um, the 4th of January, 2023 is December, November, October is three months before. And the last day in October is the 31st of October. Okay, so like I mentioned earlier, you can use this function to populate, um, let's say you have a schedule, you have a routine activity that you have to turn in at the end of every month. You can just do this today and knowing that the today function is very dynamic. When I open the, any day that you open your um, Microsoft Excel file, it updates using the current date. So you're very sure that your end of month function is going to update itself automatically as well. And we will do for the last one, the end of month, the start date is this, and I'm going to just choose minus 10 and close the bracket. And this is what I have. Now we have another function called edate. Okay, so the, the edate function, um, almost just like the end of month function but in this case the e date function gives you the the current date in the n number of months that you're looking for it doesn't take you to the end of the month it just gives you the date for the number of months that you're asking for so basically i you have the, the two arguments there is the start date and the month which are compulsory um, fields that you have to um provide information for i have selected my start date and then the number of months i can choose one i want excel to return for me okay the date that i have my start date says the 12th of june i want excel to return for me the 12th of july and this is why i used one if you want excel to re return for you three months after the start date or five months after the start date. All you need to do is just to put five and this is exactly what you have. Mind you, the start date is 12th of July, 2021, but using um, five months, five months ahead of that is exactly the 12th of December, 2021. And I am going to also do this and take it previous for the previous for the months previously i'm going to do minus one and here we have first of june 2021 but the e date minus one shows me first of may 2021 and we're just going to do for the others the start date is this and then we have minus 10 and this is what we have Okay, and of course, you can also use the today function to also achieve this. You put today, open parenthesis and close, and you choose the number of months to be three. And this is what we have as well. I hope you enjoyed this particular video where we have gone through a lot of date functions. It's basically a continuation of the previous video that we have done on date functions. We have gone through the um, how to calculate days, um, the network days without holidays, network days with holidays, network days international, end of month, and e-date. We've also seen how to use the noun function. We have seen how to do... Um, we have seen how to use the now function. We have seen how to do date differences between dates, bearing in mind that the date difference function is an undocumented function in Microsoft Excel. And we have also seen scenarios where if the start date is, um, what I say, if it is not before the end date, you're going to have a non error um, return for you in Microsoft Excel. Um, I hope you enjoy the content. Once again, please do subscribe to this YouTube channel to have more content contents come your way. Give us a thumbs up and drop comments in the comment section. Hit the notification bell so that you will be informed when new videos are uh, when new videos are uploaded to the YouTube channel. And of course, check in the description box 
for the practice file for this particular tutorial so that you can practice along. See you in another video. Bye-bye.